What's up guys, Julian here today. I'm gonna be showing you how to make Boys Noise Style Techno Electro. This is one of the ones you guys have been requesting literally for years, and it is here. So, as usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything from this video is available on the top of the description. Definitely go grab that. It's a great value. You get a really high quality template. You can take your tracks to the next level for a really accessible price. So definitely go grab that. You can also find my lessons and track finishing and ghost production. All that is in the description as well. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Don't make a whole lot off of YouTube, but this really helps keep me going, so I can keep showing you guys new stuff like this, and let's dive in. Alright, we're at 125 BPM, and the first thing we got up here, well, the first first thing, is the side chain. All it is, is the kick, and I just took a little short piece of that, so you can side chain stuff to that. And you kind of get a snappier groove. Then we have the drums. So the drums are pretty simple, if you listen, it's really just a lot of drum machine sounds, but, and there's a big but to that, if you just try to get like the straight, like let's say you just, you're like, oh okay, drum machine 808, 909 sounds, and then you try and just go over here, and just take the 808 core kit, or the 909 core kit, it's not quite that, it's drum machine sounds, with like this very particular kind of engineering to it, and it makes it work. Now, when I speak of engineering, you can see, I mean, it's not really anything too special. If you look at all of this, you know, the processing, it's pretty simple. It's more so, like, the thought process going into it. Like, okay, for example, this is an 808 kick. It's called progressive kick here, but it's an 808 kick, you know? And this is not, like, just a straight 808 kick, like, you know? It's this very big, fat... You know, like, there's a lot of little details going on here, like, I've got a low pass filter with an envelope on it to kind of make it a bit more like clicky. You know, we got some drum bus, we're cutting the low end. Even just the particular sample, I'd say that's the most important thing. Like, you know, there's a big difference between this and then like that kind of an 808 kick, right? So we got that. And then it's the same thing, like, you know, the snare. Again, it's just 808 snare. 909 clap with a bit of distortion, you know, I'll talk about that in a moment, but even this, like, this 808 snare, you know, that's a different, like, it's not that little tiny 808 core kit snare, it's a big, fat 808, and even though we do have a little bit of processing on this, you can see it's all being blended, it's really that original sample you start with that's gonna make the difference. And these, these 808 sounds in particular, 909 you can kind of get away here and there with some of the, like, you know, like the 909 core kit. And these 808 sounds, you're really going to hear the difference. When you start, like, you know, just dig through the internet or try tweaking a few of these sounds and then bouncing it out, you're going to see a huge difference when you start with these really high-quality 808 sounds that really actually smack rather than just, like like I said, trying to get that 808 core kit and then being, oh, my God, why, why doesn't it sound like boys' noise? Well, he's probably not just using that. Then we have, like I said, the 909 clap. So again, just a clap from a 909. This one's distorted, though. When I was listening to his tracks, I noticed he'll do this a lot. It's like an 808 snare and then a 909 clap. But it's not just like the straight clap. It's got that distortion, so you're really getting the, like, out of the 909. And then on the group there, we have a little bit of amp. Here's without it. Then with it. It's so little, it's only at 8%, but that's all you really need to kind of just add a bit more fatness to this. And then we got a high pass filter. Then we have some hi-hats from the 606 core kit. You can see just straight, closed hi-hat. And then the open one hits at the end there, you know, pretty simple, just keeps the beat going. No processing on that. So you can see with these hi-hats, you can use these kits. Like the 606 core kit is great for the hi-hats. This I'm even using the 808 core kit here. See, it's going through a high pass, a little bit of overdrive, and some drum bust to kind of make it a bit more crunchy, but that's just adding some background percussion. And when you listen to the drums, you see it all fits together really well. Like it's very you can pretty much hear right away what's everything that's happening here it's just really in those samples that you use i think so then we got this little operator it's just like a little 
It's just a square wave with a really short envelope. That's all it is. And that actually kind of sits on top of the drums. But it's actually a synthesizer. Then we have this bass. So I was trying to really show you guys how to make some of these sounds that I was hearing in these tracks and I've put together kind of like three bass sounds here. You know, they all kind of fit together. You can definitely do a track where like maybe there's one part where it's just these. And then maybe just these. Right, but I wanted to show you all of this for the sake of the tutorial, just showing you how to do all these different styles of basses. So that's why that might be a bit overcrowded. But basically for this sound, what it is, it's two layers. We got this thing, which is kind of like, you know, the main pluck that you're hearing. And then a sub. And I'll actually talk about the sub because if you listen to this track, if I turn this off, That's where the low end is coming from, right? It's just this sub, which is kind of assimilating to what that top bass is doing. And really all the sub is doing, it's just a square wave with a low pass filter like that. And then we've got, it's just playing dong, 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 dong. Right? Really simple. It's the same pattern as up here, just without the octave jumps. But again, you want to pick like where your sub is going to come from because I could make a sub that's doing this. But it wouldn't be as steady because it's jumping around so much. And then same thing like... We could try to get a sub out of that, but I mean... This seemed to be the cleanest place. And if you listen, this bass line grooves the best with the drums. Right, and then you need all these cool FM sounds, all the cool modular synthesis or whatever you think you're hearing. It still always has to be... Like a good groove fundamentally. So then moving up to this bass, what is happening here is we're playing this pattern, this boom 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 boom. Right? There's a lot of groove happening here with the notes. It's only one note across two different octaves. Right? Like really simple like that. But what's happening is we're using this this patch and operator here. You can see it's four sine waves doing some FM. We've got like this super short pluggy envelope and they're all at different octaves. But what's happening, if you look in here, is you can see there's some of these. I have this velocity turned up a little bit more, particularly on oscillator B. And then if you look over here, there's also a low pass filter, you know, with a shaper, bit of an envelope and also an LFO. But if you look in here, you can see on the LFO, we have the amount of velocity turned up. On the filter, we have the frequency velocity turned up a little bit. And even in here, you can see I've got the filter drive mapped to that velocity, as well as this A oscillator crossfade A and C. So now what's happening is all of those things are being controlled by the velocity of how hard the notes hit. So then what I did, once I set all that up, and so over here, I have this total random, which is a preset for the Ableton velocity that I tweaked a bunch because it wasn't really like total random isn't really what you want, but I just wanted to start with that. And then what happened is I've got this going. So now we're getting random velocities and we have a synth which has a ton of parameters mapped to the velocity. So what happens? You're getting this like seemingly random movement. And this is actually kind of a lot of like, you know, F or modular synthesis is kind of like the same type of thing. Like, when you hear all those crazy sounds, and I'm pretty sure Boys Noise uses some modular stuff, but when you hear all those crazy sounds, you know, it has, it all just boils down to like what parameters are being moved and how, right? And that's essentially what this is, you know? It's just picking a few different parameters. I mean, to tell you the truth, I just, I didn't even know exactly like what this was going to sound like. I just knew these particular parameters would sound cool if they were moving around a lot. Pick something to map it to, and there you go. And when it's the random velocity, you get a constantly changing and evolving sound. Now there's a little bit of processing on here. I'll turn it all off really quick and show you what we're working with. Right, so it's a bit dry. 
if you don't do this stuff. So we've got a bit of chorus. Right, you can hear that spreading it. We have this saturator on the wave shaper. So here's without that. Right, that's the thing that really takes it and distorts it to that next level. We have a low pass filter here with a little bit of an LFO on it. Which is at like a weird time, so you're getting cool movements. We've got a bit of drum bust. And then a high pass filter. And on the group, you can see it's just a bit of side chaining. And then another high pass to cut out that like low, low bass that would get in the way of the headroom. And there we go. Then we have this bass. So as you can hear, this is a very like rhythmic pattern. If you hear it with the kick and the snare. It's almost using the notes like a drum, right? Like, like the way we wait all for that last 16th note there. And then it hits right as the snare is hitting. Right? Like there's a lot of groove happening there. Now musically, it's pretty simple. You know, if you look, it's really just D sharp, E, and F sharp. Those are the only notes. Right, so it's really about that groove and also making sure you write something that's gonna fit. That's not gonna clash with that. And you can hear like, you know, when these two play the same note, you get this nice kind of like thing going on, but then when they mess when they're not matching, you get like a nice dissonance as well, which works well for the overall mix. Now for this sound, it's made with three layers. We got this analog layer. Which is pretty crazy. You can hear that's most of what you're hearing. So it's a saw wave with a square wave and some noise. Low pass filter with a heavy envelope on it. And a bit of key tracking too. Amp like that. And then we've got some vibrato and some unison. And then just a bunch of chorus. Right? Just like a big warbly bass. Then we have this FM sound. Which is three sine waves FMing each other. You know, doing this like punchy kind of thing. Really simple, nothing else happening there. And then we have a wavetable patch. Which is this. You can see there's an envelope on the filter frequency and then also on this sweep oscillator wavetable position. Then we have a bit of noise unison. And there we go. And then all you need on that, if you're doing a big layered sound like this, you don't want to do too much over processing because that's when it starts to get really messy. So it's really just a high pass filter, side chain. You know, you want this sound to happen in the layers, not in the processing after the layers. Then we have these two little stabs. So these just kind of pop in there. They add a bit kind of to the drum groove, honestly. Right, just kind of bouncing off of that. Particularly here, you can hear like... <laughs> like it goes into the snare like that. So all it is, a bit of white noise with an attack on it and a high pass filter to make it fade in like that. Well, the attack is what makes it fade in, not the high pass filter. And then we have this little vocal sample. Bit of reverb and distortion. You know, simple stuff, but it just adds a bit of groove and kind of like... You have a lot of things that are da -da 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 -da, kind of constantly rapid fire. These are some things that just pop in and out in the background. Alright, and now the final boss, the last opponent you must defeat here, is this 808 chord cap. So what we're doing here, you can hear it's a really cool way of creating this super unique synth. Like, what we're doing here is, I'll show you the original pattern. So, we're basically just distorting the 808 chord kit. Like, that's literally all it is. It's just doing this. But you notice, it's all these sounds that have, like, tones to them. Like, you know, if you did, like, the maracas, like, that's not going to distort well. Because it doesn't really have, like, a tone. But this... Those, and especially the kick, they'll get distorted because it has a bit of a tone to it. So then what we're doing... Well, I'll talk about that in a moment, actually. And so we got this distortion.
bit of chorus. You can see how it's all coming together. High pass it. And then the last thing here is... This grain delay. So what's happening is there's a bit of an automation on the spray there. And you can see it just adds some nice texture to this. Particularly if you do this before the distortion, you can get a really cool feel. You can actually ignore that mini envelope. And then the last thing is just side chain. And that's gonna be it for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, mini, presets, the entire template is available on top of the description on my website. Definitely go grab that. It's a really great way to support me. If you guys enjoyed these videos and you want to see more, go ahead and go grab that. So you can help keep me going. It really helps. I appreciate all the support guys because I love bringing you guys all these new videos and really like one of my greatest passions is bringing this knowledge to you guys and showing you guys stuff and figuring stuff out and trying to get it as close as possible so that we can all benefit from it you know i wished there were tutorials and templates like this available when i was first starting so definitely go support the mission grab this link is in the top of the description thank you so much for the support guys and i'll see you tomorrow with another video